Hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Malcolm Dewey and today I'm going to be painting something for you in oil paints. Beautiful country scene, lots of light, lots of shadows and trees, some of my favorite subjects to paint. So let's have a quick look at the materials that I'm going to be using and then I'm going to jump right in and start painting. Starting off with brushes. I like to use bristle brushes because they handle the oil paints very well. And these are pretty much like the impressionists used to use as well. And now the paints, white paint, titanium white. We need a good amount of that. And then the primary colors in warm and cool. So let's do blue. There's ultramarine blue and a cooler blue, cerulean blue. And then yellows, a cool yellow like lemon yellow and a warm yellow like cadmium yellow, a warm red like red light or cadmium red light, a cool red, I prefer alizarin crimson and then an earth color like burnt sienna is good to have and yellow ochre. You can mix pretty much all the other colors you need. I may include something like phthalo green for some strong dark colors. I don't use black with oil painting because all my shadow colors can be mixed from burnt sienna, ultramarine, alizarin crimson or phthalo green. Okay, let's have a look at what I'm going to be painting on. And I've got a beautiful box canvas here and that'll be perfect for this subject. Okay, I'm going to start off with giving this canvas just a, a slight tone with some burnt sienna. So I'm using a large brush, number 12 brush, a bit of burnt sienna and just a little bit of white spirits and I'm just going to get a tone onto this canvas. Now with this side, the top here, there's going to be some mountains and I'm just going to make that a cooler tone. And using a bit of tissue, I can just get rid of some of the paint where I want to have highlights or lighter color coming in. And you can already see some of the image coming out in this. And I'll leave that to just settle a bit for about 10 minutes or so and come back and start with the main painting. I'm going to start off this painting with a quick rough in of the main shapes using a large brush and some ultramarine blue with a bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to draw in the main shapes and get in the main lines and then I go into the darkest darks. Ultramarine, burnt sienna, bit of red, and rough in those big dark shapes. If you're getting the big dark shapes in quickly at an early stage, most of the painting already starts to take shape. And it's these big dark shapes that anchor the whole painting. They create the foundation. All the shadow colors as well. Try and get those in early. Now, I can start bringing in some of the middle value colors, the cooler greens in the middle distance. And then I'll move into the mountain shapes as well. Once all of these shapes are in, then your painting is in my opinion, halfway done. What's left is just to develop the shapes a bit more and add a few finishing touches. Through the field 
So now into the mountain. Now there's some nice sunny color in that mountain, but it's got to be pushed back quite some distance. So we create aerial perspective by bringing in white paint and some blue to cool these colors down and they will naturally fall away into the distance. It's almost a little turquoise green, but it looks really good. And it goes back into the distance. So just what I need in those mountains. A little bit of red and white to suggest the rocks. There's a ton of details in those mountains, but I don't want to paint them. I want that mountain to be there as a backdrop with very, very simple details. Just suggest them. Just get the canvas covered. Now the shadows in the rocks, I'm not going to use black or a very dark color. I want the shadows to be subtle and cool. So blue is just the thing. There's a nice bit of light in the foothills of the mountain. So I'm going to show that off but still keep it fairly cool compared to the foreground trees. Develop the shapes. Try and keep the shapes interesting. That's really important. So your trees mustn't look too symmetrical, too cliché. I won't bring too much more into the mountains, but there will be a few extra defining color notes here and there. Now let's finish off the blocking in stage, getting these foreground shapes. Just a bit of light on the edge of the bushes. I try to mix up all my green colors so I'm not using any tube greens just the two blues and the two yellows. I find this gives a much more authentic green, a more natural green. And now let's have a look at the colors in the road. It's almost a violet that I'm mixing up here with alizarin and a bit of blue and some white. The color of asphalt is quite a tricky color. In the distance the color must be cooled down a bit more, so a touch of white. I don't want to bring warm colors into that distant area, but they must still be light. That's important. Some nice thick paint along the sidewalk, but still fairly cool. As I bring the color forward, it gets warmer. So more cadmium yellow. And now this is really nice and warm and comes forward. So helps to create the illusion of depth. Foreground receding into the middle distance and then into the distant hills beyond. And now a nice violet, cool violet for shallow in the foreground. We're going to have this foreground shadow as something to step into as you 
head into the painting. So that's it, the block-in stage complete. Now we develop the shapes with more layers of paint. So nice blue into the tree shadows. Now as you probably know, shadows in sunny weather are cool, so we'll use blue. Blue is the cool color and yellow is the warm color. So sunlight, use more yellow and the cool shadows bring in the blue. Change the brush and uh, getting the light, the light colors. I like to use a different brush for the strong light colors. Trying to keep the color notes clean this way. Uh, suggesting lots of details, trees, but not with the strong darks as in the foreground. Here a driveway pillar, keeping it very loose. Some in the distance, all sorts of details being suggested. Let's stock up in a bit more paint. And now some nice sort of orangey yellows to add light into the edge of these trees. Vary the brush and the If you vary the pressure on the brush, you'll also help to create different brush strokes as well. Here I'm bringing in a bit more dark. Where you lose any dark colors and you go over it with lighter colors, go back and replace those darks. Otherwise the strength of the painting can suffer for that. Bit of thalo green coming in yet, and that's going to make a big, strong, juicy dark. But no white paint. Don't bring in white paint into your darks because you'll end up losing that rich dark color. Some highlights on the edge of these bushes bring it forward. And it stands out really well against those dark shapes. Overlapping shapes also create an impression of depth and distance in a painting. A really nice violet this and it just takes the eye into the corner there and uh, breaking it up with some cool color Cutting in here or there, putting a few sky holes into the tree, just tries to keep the shapes interesting. And breaking up these dark areas with a few subtle lights and then a few sparks. And that's all it takes, it looks really good. Suggesting details, as I said before. Now I need to get some light in there and just break that shadow shape up a little more. 
the name Pasta a stroke or two. So these shapes are quite subtle with soft edges. And as we come forward, the colors will get a bit more vibrant, a bit more saturated. Edges will be a little firmer. Let's just break this up a little. Now I'm using a little brush here for slightly more precise strokes in the distance. For the most part, I've used a large brush throughout this painting. And that helps to keep brush strokes loose and details out of the painting. Just a light post, very simply done. That might be just a bit too thick. I'll just cut in a little and shape that as we go. But I let the brush do the work. Just drop the brush, let it fall down the side of the painting and you get your shape. Couple nice juicy highlights. So these little sparks of color are such a pleasure, but you gotta set it up first. You gotta create your dark shadows before you put down the lights. Now some strong lights coming in. Not highlights, but good strong warm color. This is more of a highlight of impasto and it helps to just define that tree and bring it forward a bit more and separate it from the mountain behind. A few of those similar strokes up here. And the painting is now starting to take shape pretty quickly. Things pull together very fast, but if you follow a process, it's quite easy. It starts to almost looks like it paints itself, doesn't it? Side of the brush, the flat edge of the brush, the tip of the brush, all give different shapes. A few little highlights. Well, I think the trees have a fairly interesting shape, so that's good. And it's starting to come together. When you put on the brush stroke, especially with a lot of paint like this, just lift off, don't mix into the underlying layers, don't lose the vibrancy of the color. Some good thick paint coming on here. Put it down, lift off, and the color note remains clean and vibrant. A few little burnt sienna notes here for some earth tones and the reddish color of burnt sienna works nicely against all the greens in the painting. Let's just finish the suggestion of a wall. A few little sparks of light, suggestion of tree trunks and branches. Not too many, just a few. Right, 
Right, now a bit more alizarin crimson and get a nice warm foreground. And this road will sort of rise up to us. Big brush strokes, directional, create a bit of directional lines as well. Soften some of the edges on the shadow. Don't make the road too busy, but just enough detail to be interesting. And these sparks of impesto, almost a, a magical effect. The smaller brush, I'm bringing in the large light pole and uh, a little spark of light up there will look good against that dark background. Oh, the painting almost complete. A layer of violety blue in the foreground shadow makes it more colorful and interesting. Just a few little extra blues coming into all the shadows. And then I think I'm going to add a figure. A figure in a scene like this gives a focal point. It also adds some extra interest and just a touch of life to the scene. So I think um, a figure in this shadow area will look good. Let's just complete this. Shadow first, soften a few of those edges that, oh, that stands out a bit too much. Let's get rid of that. All right, with a small brush, get in a silhouette of a figure. No details, just so that it looks like it's walking along one leg longer than the other, gives the impression of walking. And a touch of light. That should about do. Just an arm as well, I think that's, that looks pretty good. And a few final strokes of light and a few sparks here or there. And I will sign the painting off. Overall, I'm happy. But a few good dollops of impasto color over here. Just for some extra punch. And that's about it. So let's have a look at the final painting. And uh, I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it watching it too. Well there's the painting done but I'll probably want to do something more to it tomorrow again. That's just the way it seems to go. But I'm quite happy with how that turned out. I think it got the idea of light through the oak trees, some nice shadows, just a, a quiet and peaceful day in some beautiful nature. Well, I hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Once again, thanks to Color by Felix for allowing me to guest on the channel. And, and maybe we'll see each other again sometime in the future. Cheers for now.